Morning again, everyone. And a shout out to everybody who tunes in and watches us online. So how many people have ever had someone say or do something to you that bothered you so much that you kept thinking about it over and over for days? Anybody ever have one of those? Or so how many people ever had someone who was so mean and so hurtful that you had a hard time getting over it and you couldn't bring yourself to forgive them? Anybody ever? How many people have right now something that was either from the past or the recent that you still know you need to forgive? Anybody? You know, forgiveness is not easy. Kind of reminds me of this couple. That once a time in, upon a time in their marriage, Saul did something that was really stupid and sensitive and inappropriate, and his wife Ethel absolutely chewed him out for it. He apologized, and she forgave him, and then they made up. However, from time to time, Ethel would bring up that same issue to him. And after several times doing it, Saul finally said one day, Honey, why do you keep bringing that up? I thought your policy was forgive and forget. And Ethel said, Yes, it is. I just don't want you to forget that I forgave and forgot. <laughs> Forgiveness. Not an easy thing. I truly believe that forgiveness is one of the most difficult. I believe it is one of the hardest, and I also believe that it is one of the least liked of all spiritual practices. And yet, I also believe it is the most healing, it is the most liberating, and it is the most empowering of all spiritual practices. Just even the word forgiveness, it doesn't sound like a fun word. It sounds kind of hard. It sounds kind of heavy. You know, we'd rather put forgiveness off to another time. Even though we know it's good for us, we don't like rush to it because it isn't easy. I think forgiveness is so unpleasant, I would call it the, the spiritual equivalent of going to the dentist. Anybody, la anybody not like going to the dentist? Anybody just besides me? Do you know that in our country, 75% of people don't like going to the dentist? 75% of us have some form of dental anxiety. Seriously, because it's uncomfortable. We know it's good for us, but it's uncomfortable. You know, you have people poking their fingers all up in your private business. You know, and then you got a, you're lying back. You feel very, very vulnerable besides uncomfortable. And then that suction thing, I don't know, you know, it's, it's tough. The drill in, the fill in, the bill in, we don't like the dentist. It's just, and yet we know it's good to do. It's important to have healthy teeth and gums. Not doing it actually can lead a lot of not, not only problems in your mouth, but actually there are connections to your heart and stroke by not taking care. And yet we resist. Yet we're reluctant to do something we know that is important for us. Forgiveness is something that's powerful, it's healing, it's empowering, and it's important for us to practice. It's important for us to add into a regular part of our lives. I was reading a book this week called Forgive for Good by Dr. Fred Luskin. He's the director of the Stanford University Forgiveness Project. He's been doing scientific research on the benefits of forgiveness, and he says that scientifically they've proven that forgiveness improves our health and our happiness. That when you forgive, you actually have less, less symptoms, less stress, less anxiety. Those who blame other people, those who hold resentment, tend to have increased levels of illness and disease. It lowers their immune system as well. They say that even if people have been through tragic things, if they learn how to forgive, they actually improve psychologically and emotionally. And it's not just our health, it's our overall mental, emotional well-being. When you forgive, guess what? You have a more positive attitude. We tend to be more grateful. You know, we tend to be kinder. When we're more forgiving, our mind is clearer and we actually tend to have more creativity in our lives. When we forgive, we feel more connected with our partner and people in our lives and have more intimacy. Your forgiveness allows us to free ourselves from the pain of the past and the hurts and disappointments to move forward, to live more joyously, to live more freely, to live with greater love and passion. So forgiveness is so good. Why do we have a hard time with it? And Fred Luskin says it's because every one of us engages in creating uh, grievances. 
Every one of us have a, has a list or compiles a list of all the wrongs and the unfairness in our lives. And those happen when we think when something doesn't go the way we want it to go or ha happens or someone says or does something we didn't want them to say or do. And what happens is we're not able to cope with it well, so we end up, he says, renting way too much space in our mind with it. And he says grievances and renting space has three elements. Number one is when a wrong or something happens, we take it personally. That we internalize it and it ingrains um, the pain inside of us. Thinking that people are out to get us, they did it intentionally to hurt us or mess up their lives. We feel wounded, we feel insult insulted, we feel uh, attacked. Now anger and emotion is normal, but it's when we take it personally that we actually ingrain it and becomes long lasting. It drains our energy and weakens us. Second one is that we blame uh, other people for our pain. Blame our mom, blame our dysfunctional family, blame our boss, blame our ex. We blame other people saying they ruined our lives, they did it to us, it's their fault, they are the cause of my happiness. And what we do when we blame is actually just give our power away give the control of our happiness away to someone else. And the third is we create a grievance story. It's one thing to tell somebody um, that what happened to you and it felt uh, unfair and so on, you know, once or twice. But when you're up into 20, 30, and 40, and, or several years into the story, we have an issue. Because what it does is keeps that energy alive, but not just keeps the energy alive, it builds a narrative and story that begins to develop who we are and how we think like, like is, life is. We tend to develop a mentality of being a victim because when we keep saying the story again, we start believing that we are victims and it keeps us absolutely stuck in the pain, stuck in the past, stuck believing that life is unfair. You know, grievances can happen with all kinds of things. We can have grievances within our family, we can have grievances with a partner may have lied or betrayed or someone may have left us or having a broken heart. We might have a grievance at work with a boss who's been unkind or we got passed up for a promotion. You know, we can get a grievance because somebody didn't invite us to a party. We can get a grievance, you know, because uh, someone cut us off on the highway or someone stole our parking lot two weeks ago in the P.F. Chang parking lot when I was late for a meeting. I mean, it happens. People get upset and hold on to upset and anger and frustration in a lot of ways. So my question is, where in your life are you taking something personally? Where in your life have you blamed someone else for your happiness or unhappiness? Where in your life are you telling a story over and over again? Or who are you renting space in your mind to? You know, the truth is we're all landlords looking at the guarding our mental house. And unfortunately, we... Uh, consciously or unconsciously choose to lease space to tenants in our heads, you know? And, 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 the, and the question is, why do we lease so much space? And the reason is, is because we're not quite sure how to deal with the hurts of life. We're not sure how to deal when someone abandons us or rejects us. And what we tend to choose is to hold on to resentment or we choose to go for revenge or we choose to shut down and run away. You know, we, or we choose blame, we choose to take it personally, we choose all kinds of things. But he says, you know what he says? Is that we, he, they show in studies that forgiveness is usually not an option when people hurt us. We do all kinds of other things, from attacking to shutting to running, but we, for some reason, don't think that when people are cruel, it doesn't come up in the register very quickly, and that's why we rent them space in our heads. Forgiveness is an important, powerful skill. It is an important spiritual practice. Here's what it says, some scriptures for it. Colossians says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Luke, forgive and you will be forgiven. And then in Matthew, Peter asks, how many times should I forgive, Lord? As many as seven? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. And in your head, you could think, okay, 70 times 7, that's 490. So can I just cut it loose on them on 491? I, I mean, the number actually is more significant than you realize. The number 7 in the Bible it actually means completion. It took seven days to complete that creation. 
Do you think it's a coincidence? He says 70 times seven. And what he's saying is forgive only when you want to feel whole and complete. Forgive only when you want to feel peace. Forgive only when you want to experience love. Forgive only when you want to let go of the pain. So what he's talking about here in the 70 times seven is do it every time and to develop actually a consciousness of forgiveness. A consciousness that doesn't stay stuck every time someone says something not so nice. Develop a consciousness that can find peace in the hurts and disappointments and rejections of life and when life doesn't go away. Develop a consciousness where you can move on from those things to experience more love, peace, and create a better life and not get stuck in it. So the question we're gonna ask this morning is, how do we forgive for good? How do we develop a consciousness of forgiveness? And the first one is, you need to make that choice. You gotta choose to forgive. You gotta want to forgive. You gotta have a desire to actually forgive. And Dr. Luskin tells us a story about this guy named Mike and his boss was being a real jerk and his thing was, I'm not gonna forgive him. I refuse to forgive, I'd never forgive him. He doesn't deserve to be forgiven. So then Dr. Luskin says, uh, suppose I had $20 million in a Swiss bank account and that you could have all that money as long as you never uh, blamed him, hated him, resented him, or, 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 or retold your story. Would you do it then? And Mike said, my mama didn't raise no fool. I wouldn't pass up on that 20 million. And while that sounds simple, is the fact is we hold on to resentment and we're not passing on 20 million, we're passing and missing out on peace of mind. We're passing and missing out on moving forward. We're passing and missing out on greater joy and creativity and intimacy. The whole idea of forgive for good is that when you don't forgive, you miss out on so much good that's full, fully available to all of us. We rob ourselves, we cheat ourselves, block ourselves from good, the good that we all seek. How important is it to choose? Book of Job says this, it says decide upon a thing and it will be established for you. So my question is, are you ready to decide to forgive? Are you ready to decide to reclaim your power? Are you ready to decide to let go of the pain? You know, we just need to choose. That's the starting point. You know, do you, are you ready to choose to forgive? I choose to forgive. Let's say that together. I choose to forgive. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. I choose to reclaim my power together. I choose to reclaim my, I choose to let go of the past. I choose to let go of the past. I choose to move on to greater things. I choose to live a better life. I choose to forgive. And the thing about forgiving is that just making the choice, he says that when you choose to forgive and just imagine yourself forgiving that person, your heart rate goes down, your stress levels goes down. Just making the choice and imagine, think of somebody if, that you might have a little resentment towards now. If you don't have one, I have a couple extra I could uh, share. So, uh, and just for a second, committing that you're choosing to forgive and just imagine what it would be like to not be holding those feelings towards them. And you know, choosing it in your head and just imagining forgiving and what it would be like makes us feel more peace. And the thing about choosing, it isn't choosing that person, that this one thing. Choosing is about choosing to be a forgiving person. Choosing to develop a consciousness of forgiveness so that you're continually freeing and liberating yourself to move on and not get stuck in life. The ultimate goal of um, forgiveness is freedom. Freedom from the past. It is freeing ourselves to live more fully now and to create a better life instead of getting stuck. And how do we do it? You go back to the whole thing that, of the grievances and, and begin to break down the things that have been holding us back. So what were the three, first, the three things of a grievance? We take it personally, we blame, and we create a story that we tell over and over, usually a victim story. So how do we do it? We go back and look at, we take things less personally. You know, the fact is, sometimes we think that we're the only one that ever got hurt. 
the only one that ever, and the truth is, life happens. As long as they're human beings, we're gonna say things and do things that aren't inappropriate, and people will say things and do things that aren't appropriate, and it's, it's important to not take it personally. Life happens to everyone. Hurts, disappointments, rejection, those things happen. It is a part of life, and it's important to, to, not, to not take it personally. The more personally we take it, the more it hurts. You know, he says something that every single one of us creates rules of how life should be, rules of how people should speak and act, and when they violate one of our rules, we get angry, we get resentful, and, and, and we get mad. And we make up rules for everything. People should always be nice to me. This is how people should dress. This is how people should speak, you know? This is how the dishwasher should be stacked. <laughs> I mean, we go to town on all kinds of things, you know? And when people violate, and the fact is there's nothing wrong with having boundaries and how we like life to go, but when we get too attached to the rule and someone breaks it, it triggers us and we get angry and hold it against them. And so it's important to know anytime we get triggered, it's because someone has violated one of our rules. And no matter how sensible and logic the rule is, it's our rule. And the more attached we are to the rule, the more pain and upset comes. And what he says is, is instead of making it a, a rule, a demand, an expectation, we make it a hope or a wish. I hope people are always nice to me. You know, I hope someone doesn't cut me off on the highway. You know, I hope, you know, that people speak to each other kindly. And when it doesn't happen, because one of the things about, uninfor about these rules is we don't control other people's behavior. You can have all the rules you want, but you cannot control what other people will say and do in life. And because you can't, then we need to hope that it happens, but not expect and demand it, because otherwise we set ourselves up for disappointment. We need to open space in there for understanding and acceptance. You know, I hope my business partners, you know, always tell the truth, but if they don't, I understand and accept that sometimes I have to deal with that and handle that. And so it's important, you know, to ask ourselves, what am I fighting against right now, and can I make peace with it? And it doesn't mean you don't have rules or boundaries, but it's to stop that internal stuff of taking it personally and hating it and fighting against it. Makes sense, everyone? Okay. Second one is to take, accept responsibility. You know, we tend to give our power away when we blame. And so one of the things he says is we need to do two things, is to focus on the good and to, make, and to cultivate feelings of good. And, and I really appreciate it. He said all of us have certain channels that run in our, 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 our minds. You know, like CNN runs all the time. He said that some of us have I had, a, I had Rotten Parents channel or um, I had My Life is Unfair channel or My Boss is a Jerk channel. People always take advantage of me channel. And these channels play, TV things just play on in our head and they give us confirmation of how not fair life is. And she said, we gotta, he said, we gotta change the channel. Start looking at the gratitude channel. You know, start, start looking at the love channel or the beauty channel and the forgiveness channel because we need to control what's going on in our, fo what we're focusing on. When we focus only on the pain, it tends to drag us down and attract more and more pain. And while I love what he said, to me, taking responsibility is about, you know, thinking and seeing the good, and it is about cultivating feelings of gratitude and joy, but I also think we gotta go deeper into taking responsibility, and that is also taking responsibility for the resentment we feel. Because no matter what anybody did, we, we allowed those feelings to happen in us. We allow the upset, we allow, you know, the, uh, the regret and the shame. And another thing of it, we, one, we gotta acknowledge our stuff. Two, a part of responsibility is you gotta be willing to let it go. Let go of the blame. Let go of the anger. You can't get rid of it just focusing on the good and creating good feelings. There's a bit of releasing that has to happen. There is some letting go. You know, they did a study on people who were 100 years old and asked them, other than genetics, what do you think accounted for you living to be 100 years old? Four things, number one, a good attitude. Number two is they had goals to work towards. Number three, they had a good social network. And number four was they had to learn how to let go. Because they said in 100 years, there are a lot of things that happen that we need to release if we want to move forward. 
Letting go is one of the most powerful spiritual practices, and forgiveness is an aspect of letting go. Letting go scares us. Is What if I let go of that story? Who will I be? If I really let go and surrender it all, will I be okay? And yet that's the most trusting, and that is the most powerful thing, is to know is when you let go, God will bring peace. When you let go, God will bring more joy. You'll open yourself to more good. So taking responsibility is to take, I have anger right now, accept that, choose to let go of that anger, and then release it to God for God to heal it. I love Psalm 51, verse 10. It says, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Accepting responsibility is about acknowledging the pain, taking responsibility for it, but also choosing to let it go and giving it to God. I love this book, it was great, but that spiritual aspect, to me, that is where the real healing happens. So think of whatever it is in your life you need to forgive, and are you willing to acknowledge and accept responsibility that you held those? Are you willing to release and just let them go, let go of the blame, and are you willing to give it to God and just say, God, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew in me a right spirit? Because I think that's the only way healing really happens. It is at a soul level. Let's say that together. I'll say it one more time. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Let's say that half voice together. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Just take a deep breath into that. Because that's where the healing happens. That's where the soul is released. That is where things are transformed. And that's what opens you up to live. The final thing is that we got to change the story from a victim story to a hero story. You have to change the story from a story of hurt to a story of power and overcoming. And the way he says to do that is that whatever hurt happens, think of what's the bigger goal I was actually going for. So she had this uh, lady named Sharon was married to this uh, guy named Jim, and Jim, you know, d- decided to leave her. And she was so crushed, and the story was, he, you know, quit on our relationship. He ruined, you know, my dream for a, a, a great relationship. He did this, he did that. And then Dr. Luskin said, okay, so what, what did you really want? I wanted him to stay. I wanted to be married to him. So what was your actual goal? My goal was, I want a loving and nurturing relationship. And he said, well... Apparently, it didn't work out with Jim. But does that mean you could never have one again? And he said, no. And then he said, so what can you do to change this story from a victim story to a hero story? And so what she did was she started going to counseling and reading books. She started talking to people who had successful relationships. She started doing a personal inventory and clarifying what she really wanted. Look at how she showed up in the relationship. And then suddenly, the story, instead of weakening her, it empowered her. And it made her focus on, on, on creating an even greater relationship. If you think of any single thing you do, you can always use it to help empower you to become better. You know, someone... Um, Teach you in your business, learn from it to become a better business person. Something does, challenges you and tells you you're not a good leader, learn from it and become a better leader. Something happens in your family, even losing a loved one, that you can actually use that to help bring healing to other families who have lost or extend your family in a new way. There isn't anything that we cannot change the narrative to use that to actually become better. You know, what if some, someone say bad things happen when we can actually become bitter or better? And so we all get to choose to create a better story. You look at anyone who has achieved anything great, I guarantee you they turned a story of, from victim to, to, to a story of, of victor. They chose something that could have been overwhelming to something that they choose to, 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 to be an overcoming story. You know, Oprah Winfrey, you know, was, was raped. She had all kinds of difficulties and not the greatest family life. And she didn't let that story be the story of her life. She used that story to do great and amazing things. Nelson Mandela, 26 years in prison. He could have done a victim story. He didn't. He came out to be president of his country. Jay-Z, the musician, 
did not, not one person assigned him to a label. He could have said, poor me, I'm no good, I'll, I won't do anything. He started his own label that's worth half a billion dollars today. Steven Spielberg didn't get in to the film school he wanted. He didn't let that stop him. He went on and is an amazing director. Dr. Viktor Frankl was held in a Nazi concentration camp and he used that experience to empower himself to teach. And his famous line is, People can take anything from you, but one thing they can never take is your ability to choose your attitude in, in any particular condition. And the point I'm trying to make is whatever injustice you've had, whatever wrong, whatever person isn't treating you kindly or think isn't going well, don't let that stop you from living your life. Don't let it stop you from going after your goals and dreams and having greater levels of success and happiness. The fact is, in this life, there will be disappointments. As long as they're people, you know, we won't always act in this kind of way. So forgiveness is a skill that we have to learn how to do. Instead of taking it personally, blaming, and telling a story, a victim story, we can literally make some new choices. We can literally begin to understand and accept. We can let go and release it to God, and we can choose it to learn and become better. There's so much good waiting for us. There are so many greater possibilities that holding on to resentment stop us to. So this week, if anyone says or does or triggers anything in you, I invite you to choose to forgive for good. God bless you all.